Got a new power station from All Powers. This is the R1500. We're going to uh, check this one out. I was going to do a teardown on this, but unfortunately, due to new security screws they've put on it, I don't have a bit to open it. So we will have to skip that for now. If I get a security bit, I will certainly do another video to feature that. But today we're going to unbox it. We're going to give it a load test, look at the waveform, and uh, see how it performs. Today we're going to look at the All Powers R1500 portable power station. This power station features a battery chemistry, lithium iron phosphate, has a capacity of 1152 watt hours, or 1.152 kilowatt hours. It's a 48 volt, 24 amp hour battery. This thing weighs about 36.8 pounds. You can see the dimensions. The input is 100 to 120 volts, 15 amps maximum. That's for charging. The solar input, 12 to 60 volts at 13 amps, 650 watts. So you can charge it from your solar uh, charger solar panel and you can also charge it in the car 12 to 24 volts so it can work in big rigs as well as passenger cars has an output of uh am i reading this correct 200 to 240 volts what the hell did they send me a 240 volt version like hello is that right i guess we'll find out maybe it's just printed wrong but it says the output's 240 volts and if that's the case well, we won't be doing much of a test on this, will we? Um, yeah, well, let's crack this open and just check that voltage. I hope that this is just a, a, a misprint because uh, with an input of 100 to 120 volts, you would expect the output would be the same. It also features two uh, USB-A, 5 volt, 3 amp, 9 volt, 2 amp, 12 volt, 1.5 amp, 36 watts max, and two USB-C, which will support up to 200 watts and a 10 amp car port and wireless charging at 30 watts maximum anyway let's get this open i again i hope that that's a typo on this label because otherwise i won't really be able to do much of a test on it because i don't really have anything that requires a hundred or 240 volts but we'll find out let's get this thing out of the box so one thing i noticed right away it actually has two wireless chargers so you can charge up two things now, on the front here, I think it was just a typo. On the front, whew, AC output 100 to 120 volts, 1800 watts. Just a misprint on the box. It's about giving me a heart attack there. You've got four standard 120 volt outlets, two USB C, two USB A, 12 volt, 10 amp. And again, two chargers there, or two charge ports there. On the side, you can put expanded batteries on it, port one and port two. So you can actually connect two additional batteries for longer run time. And on the other side, we've got our 120 volt and solar input. And this would also do the charging from car. In the accessory bag, there'll be a power cord, and uh, and that's just it. No DC cord. So if you're going to use this with a DC source, like charging from a car, you have to supply your own cord, and also for solar, you'd have to supply your own cabling. It comes with the AC charge cord only. So first things first, let's turn this thing on, and uh, I'm going to bring this up to full charge, and I'm going to load this thing up with an electric heater see how much a percentage it's got 72 percent looks like of the battery i'm going to plug it in we're going to bring it up to full charge and then i'm going to load up a heater on here and uh, load it up to like 1500 watts and we'll see how long it runs so first things first let's get the battery charged i'll plug the ac cord into the side i'm curious as to whether this will operate as a ups So it's now charging. Let's turn on the AC. That turns on the AC output, I believe. And uh, let's just see if we can draw power from this thing. Right now it's charging at uh, 242 watts. Let me grab something I can plug into there, such as a heat gun, just because it's 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 handy. Let's we'll see if this one will run as a UPS. So there's my heat gun. 
I'll turn it on high. Okay, now I'm drawing 1256 watts. I'm still charging with 270. So it looks like it's going to run as a UPS. If I disconnect the power going in, the heat gun should still run and not be interrupted. And it does. Excellent. So this unit will operate as a UPS. Plug it back into power. And the charge should start going on here. There we go. So now it's running as a UPS. Excellent. That's what I want to see. I want to see these things run as UPSs. I'm currently using another one right now to power up my computer system. And this looks very promising. Right now, just the amount of power this thing can draw, I might end up using this thing to power up all of my... Uh, back up everything in the house that needs to have power. Anyway, I'm going to let this thing charge at 74%. We're going to run it. We're going to load it up to maximum power. Use the heat gun. Use another electric heater. Try to get this thing. We'll see what happens if I overload it. And uh, so forth. You can turn off the AC power now just to speed up the charging. And uh, we'll just turn on the DC power over here. Mm. Oh, now it's on. Okay. Uh, There, my phone's charging. Fast wireless charging, cool. And charge two phones at once. As you can see right now, we're charging at 694 watts input. And uh, they're at 85%. So once I, dis once I fully charge the battery, we're gonna discharge it. We'll time how long it runs. First of all, to discharge at rated power, a little bit under. It's 1800 watts rating. I hope I can draw that. I probably can. I'll plug a couple of heaters into it. We'll try to get this thing to close to maximum power. Time it, see how long it runs, and then charge it up. All right, I'm at 100%. I'm gonna unplug the AC power going in. I'm gonna plug in some heaters. Turn on the, A oh, the AC's on. So I'm gonna put on this heater first, because I know this one's gonna initially draw lots of power but then it's gonna probably drop back a bit so we're at about 960 watts I'll turn on this on low if I turn this on high I'll probably overload yeah I'm at 2000 watts now and it shuts down because I'm I'm exceeding the maximum power so I'm going to run this on low, run the other heater as well, it's got to restart everything here. Uh, turn it back on. There we go. And I'm going to turn this one on low power. This will get my output to about 1500 watts. I'm going to start my timer going here and uh, we'll see how long this runs. So stopwatch is going. I can even put my phone on charge while this is going and draw a little more power. I think it's on now. There we go. So now I draw a bit of power here from the DC output. 1500 watts. According to the guesso meter here, it says it should be about 32 minutes of runtime remaining. It's been going for two minutes and uh, 18 seconds now, so we'll see if we get that 31 minutes. Six minutes, 40 seconds in. Still showing there's 25 minutes remaining. We'll see how this plays out as the time gets going further. All right, been going for 23 minutes now. A meter just said seven, it just changed to six. Looks like it's gonna be about another six minutes, so. We should be just shy of 30 minutes when this shuts down. I'm showing four minutes remaining. There we go. So we got 26 minutes 
and about four seconds when it actually shut down. I really want to take this unit apart, but what the hell kind of security bit have they put on this thing? I don't have those type of bits. What is it? It's not a Torx. Well, I was planning on doing a teardown, but uh, since I don't have the right type of bit to open this up, I guess that's not going to happen. I'll just put the little plugs back in here and we'll charge it up and see how long it takes to charge. And then uh, take a look at the waveform. A sight set on opening this thing up and seeing how well it was built. But uh, I guess they don't want people getting into it. I can understand why companies would do that. I can understand why they would put in some type of proprietary bit because people tend to experiment and start changing batteries. We've seen too many house fires, apartment fires, etc. from people opening up devices that they should never get their fingers into and start putting in different capacity of batteries. Any lithium battery has to be respected. Doesn't matter whether it's lithium ion phosphate or lithium lithium ion or lithium iron phosphate. Any lithium battery has to be respected. And when people start getting into equipment and just putting in whatever batteries they want because they think they're going to get higher capacity batteries, and then bad things happen, like units you know, catch on fire, then uh, it looks bad for the manufacturers. So they want to keep people out of them and the way they're doing it on this one is they're putting in security bits I don't even know what type of bit that is it's hard to tell it looks like it could be like a hex key with a, a pin but I can't even see it it looks almost round but I think it probably does have a hex key deeper down inside and um, it would be like a hex key with a pin in it but I don't have anything like that so I'm going to just have to skip the teardown. I'll plug it in and uh, we'll let it charge up. And then we'll just look at the waveform. So it's on charge now. Get the dust off it. It's going to probably sit at one watt input for a couple minutes. There it goes. Now it's going to go up to full power. We'll see the unit ramp up, get to its full charge power. Indicator showing the fans running. Obviously it is because it's going to get warm. And it says it's going to take an hour to charge. Now, of course, you can also use the app to control it. And if you want to select the fast charging mode, you have to use the app. It has a fast charging mode of 1500 watts. But of course, I was just in the normal mode here. Uh, has fast, standard, and mute mode. Maximum power is well, 1500 watts. Standard mode it can reach 1000 watts and 400 watts in mute mode. As you can hear, the fans get going pretty good to cool the unit down, but we're now charging at 1,455 watts, and it should charge up in about an hour. As you can see, I'm at 20% already. It's only been charging for a couple of minutes. Sixty minutes remaining. Okay, it's been running ten minutes now. Forty-one percent. Fifty minutes remaining. Okay, the unit's now fully charged. It took just over an hour to complete a full charge. First, we'll take a look at the 
sine wave under no load. So I'll turn on the power. Where frequency is 60.21 hertz, 118.1211, and that sine wave looks pretty good. A little tiny bit of of distortion at the crossover point, but certainly nothing to be alarmed about. That's looking about as good as you could expect it to look. I'm going to um, plug in my heat gun now and we'll start this thing up on high power and see what the waveform does and whether the voltage drops. Drawing 1200 watts. We dropped to 117.75 volts. Insignificant. I'm going to grab my other electric heater now and we're going to fire that up at the same time. I'm going to put the unit into an overload condition so we can watch what it does as I go into a temporary overload. Okay, this heater is on now, drawing 1100 watts. I'm going to add the heat gun in low power mode. But you don't even notice anything on the waveform. We're now at 1600 watts. And I'm now going to turn on the high mode and go into full overload. We're at 2300 watts, 2200 watts. And it goes into a, a shutdown because, again, the 3000 watts is just momentary for surge. So I was at 2300 watts and it shut down, but we did not see any distortion on the waveform when it did that. I'll turn the power back on again. This time I'm going to start it up without removing the load, so it's going to start under full load. We started up at 1900 as both the heaters came on at the same time. Again, the waveform didn't budge. Other than that little bit of noise at startup. So I've loaded up the app and I have to turn the Bluetooth on on here. So I press and hold the power button and now it should find it. Go to next step and it's found my power station. And now it's telling me that I'm at 95%. I can, from here, I can turn on and off the outputs. I can change it 50 to 60 hertz. I can turn off the AC outlet, turn the AC outlet back on, turn on the USB, turn on the DC 12 volt, switch all the outputs on and off. And if I tap up the top here, here we go. This is where I can set the shutdown times. So if I want it to shut down after one hour in eco mode or up to six hours, it'll shut down if it's not being used. You can turn eco mode on or off. Standard mode, mute mode, or fast mode. In fast mode, it will charge at the full 1500 watts. I'll put the link in the description. Thanks for watching.